are a laughing stock. Sat up there and said, all you needed was one, but you asked for three years, and she gave you four, and each single year they have stunk. Dr. Buss left the team to Jeannie because Jeannie feels a Lakers loyalty that her father felt. That's not good enough for Jim because what Jim wants is what Jim wants, not what's best for the Lakers. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into First Take. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We're having fun on a Monday. Hope you are, too. But it is only halftime. Stephen A., what you got on your mind as we approach hour number two? Well, we got the man, Rick Ross, coming in the house. Looking forward to hollering at him. Plus, U.S. Soccer Federation wants folks standing for the national anthem. We'll be discussing that in more. Hour number two, up next, First Take in the house. I'm Holly. Four takes, that's true. Three takes, not me. Two takes, two lucky. First takes, you got me. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving rested in the Miami Heat took advantage with a blowout win over the Cavs. It was the third game in four days and the second in a back-to-back. -back. LeBron now has sat five times this year and twice against Miami since he returned to the land. Stephen A., you got a problem with this? Yes, I do. I have the same problem that I've always had with LeBron James when it comes to sitting down. Mm -hmm. I hate the fact that it's for road games. Um, I think that 41 nights you play at home in front of your hometown fans, you're going to the playoffs, they'll be able to see you then. In all likelihood, you'll be going to the NBA Finals, they'll get to see you then. When you're on the road, it's rare that they get to see you. Uh, but this particular sitting out resonated with me profoundly as well because it's the Miami Heat. It's an organization that you starred for for four years, went to four consecutive NBA Finals, brought two NBA championships to them, and then you decided to leave. And that's certainly your right, and he certainly didn't do anything wrong. He gave it all he had while he was there. Uh, he's a number, you know, they should retire his number someday and honor him and what have you. The flip side to that, however, is that those fans miss you as well. And so when you only come back like twice a year and you pick that game to sit out, knowing what you meant to that fan base and considering his philanthropy, his charity, you know, his charitable tendencies, what you mean to that community, you know, um, it, it's rare that they get to see you. And, and that kind of stuff matters. Of course, he doesn't have to do it, Max. It's not a crime that he didn't play or anything like that. But what I loved about the Kobe's, what I loved about the MJ's and others, it was individual superstars that just had this sixth sense about folks coming to see them. And it affected them. And to me, with LeBron, it just seems to be a very business-like approach in that regard. And maybe it should be. I understand that. So, again, I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm just saying that when I, I, I turned on the game looking forward to watching him against his old team, Miami, mm -hmm. and sitting on the bench, I just I, I, I felt bad for those fans there. The old odd couple show, Oscar, Oscar, Steven, Steven, mm -hmm. Steven. We go through this every time. Yeah, we this, do. With, with so I'm consistent. Issue. You know, when a football player doesn't put himself in harm's way, sometimes it's called a business decision, right? He made a business decision, and that's a bad idea. Yeah. When a college football team or basketball has an easy game on the schedule, a college football team, that's a business decision, basically. You worry about their record and, and national titles and stuff, and, and that's considered a bad thing. What you're asking lebron james and the and the Cavs to do is make a business decision rather than a competitive decision is let the business of the league mm -hmm. interfere with their competitive goals lebron james goal is one thing win a championship to hell with everything else as a player during the season if you sit down in the off season they institute a new rule or something else he's brand conscious but but during the season he's trying to get his group of guys ready to win a championship so to sit against the heat at Miami, I get it. Boo-hoo, the fans. By the way, we're not really denied theater, the rest of us. The fans in Miami are deprived. But we're not denied theater. Dwayne Wade's not there anymore. Chris Bosh isn't there anymore. That would be interesting. They're gone. So what theater are we really denied? Panning to a shot of or cutting to a shot of Pat Riley looking at LeBron or something? Like, what theater are we denied? We're just worried about the fans in Miami? Tough. Tough for the fans in Miami. In fact, as a Cavs fan, I don't want them sitting at home. I want them sitting on the road. And if you have... Of course, he's ours if you're a Cavs fan. I, you know, forget the other team. And if you're worried about anything in terms of the sitting, the real problem is Ty Lue hasn't sat him enough 
at this point in the season, to this point in the season. So he may have tired legs if they make a deep when they make a deep playoff run. That's the real problem. I get Not the that minutes, but now. other guys in the past have done it, Stephen A. Well, let me say this. Let me be very, very clear. I know how hard LeBron James works. Mm -hmm. I know the minutes that he puts in, and he logs more minutes yeah. than practically anybody. That's not what this is about. Nobody's debating whether or not LeBron gets enough time off, deserves more time off, or whatever the case may be. I have two issues. Me, inherently, I'm opposed to guys who are superstars sitting out for rear road appearances. You don't mind that. You're like, hell with that. Change the rules. I just understand that. But keep in mind, it's not always about the rules. Sometimes it's about your conscience. One of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit later on is the All-Star game mm -hmm. and how Steve Kerr and others are talking about how it's up to the players or whatever. There are things that they can do, but it doesn't make it right. The paying customer matters. The fan base matters. I'm saying to you that when you think about some of the greats throughout NBA history, the fact that LeBron, don't think for one second, as great as LeBron is, that LeBron makes all of this money because he's LeBron. That's only one component. You know what the other component is? History. How the stage was set for him because there were stars who came before him that had a level of sensitivity and elevated to such a degree that it assisted in the elevation of the popularity of a sport. But don't ask because, him to no, make, take, make those considerations in the minute, middle of a wait, season. Wait a minute. He's what playing I, by the rules. No, no, I'm saying that, I, I, Max then we don't need to discuss it because I'm not saying he broke a rule. I'm talking about your own individual You're asking conscience. him I'm saying to you to like put this. that ahead Listen, of his competitive if, if, interest. If, if I'm a superstar in the league and I know that I'm going to Utah once a year, I'm going to be sensitive to the fact that those fans in Utah will never get to see me. I'm going to be sensitive to the fact that a fan in Denver will never get to see me. I'm not going to sit up there and say, tough to hell with them because I'm a superstar and I'm going to pay attention to my fans in Cleveland. That's, and, and that's all and I'm, what saying. I'm saying. And what I'm saying is. By the way, let me the... read this lineup to you. This lineup in Miami Go ahead. Saturday night. You ready for this, Molly? Mm -hmm. Tristan Thompson, Iman Shumpert, James Jones, Kyle Korver, and Darren Williams. Yep. You trying to tell me those fans when they wanted to see the Cavaliers and they, they were went cheated. Let me really? ask you something. If LeBron they, they James plays cheated? in that game, who wins? They weren't cheated. As a Heat fan, that, that's trying irrelevant. to make the playoffs, that's trying to get to seating. It's not, it's not, as, if I'm a Heat fan, I want my team to win. If LeBron sits, that raises I, the I, odds I, that I'm we win. I'm asking you a question. You're trying to tell me that when fans went out and, we, and Rick Ross is about to be up here, the man's about to show up here to hope we can ask him to. You trying to tell me when fans went and buy a ticket for the Cleveland Cavaliers to come into town, they thought they were going to see Thompson, Shumpert, trying to make Jones, this point. Kyle Korver, and Darren Williams, who was just I'm picked up I'm trying to make this waivers. point before we're out of time. Go ahead. The point is that everything you're talking about, those issues are valid issues. But not to be asked of the star player mid-season when he's trying to win a championship. If you don't like the way things are set up, you address it in the preseason. The league can address it. The team can address it. Whatever. But in the middle of a season, the way the rules are, are at the moment, if LeBron James believes mm -hmm. that it gives him a better chance to win mm -hmm. a championship by sitting where Ty Lue believes that, sit you know what him. I don't, like don't about, make a business you know what I don't decision. Like, you know what I don't like about what you're saying? Where I find it highly insensitive what you're saying? You're acting like he only, like, it's all about just basketball. I'm sorry. LeBron is a global, iconic figure because the products he sells and markets and pushes is to a global audience. He doesn't sit up there and tell fans in Miami don't buy his stuff. But as he doesn't player, sit there and tell people, you know, in Utah or someplace else, but don't buy his as product. As a player, he wants if you it ask all. him to consider those things instead, the only You're thing him, the only thing you should ask do. your player on your team is to win a championship. So stars, so Keep your eye on the ball. So don't take your eye so, off the ball. So in other words, yeah. stars. Yep. The guys you grew up idolizing, yep. they didn't have a heightened, elevated le level of sensitivity where they went like this. This audience right here supports me. Everybody does. So guess what? Things I'm going to ingratiate myself. Oh, really? That's, yes. that's your answer. Yes. Things have changed. Okay. Irving, okay. Well. okay. All right. I ain't buying it, bro. I ain't oh, buying it. And now there's my man Rick Ross. I bet, I bet you he agrees with me. Okay. I bet you he agrees with me. We'll get into it with him in just a minute. One sport is trying to avoid the issues the NFL faced when Colin Kaepernick kneeled for the national anthem. We'll tell you what they are doing later in the show. Meanwhile, our next guest, he needs no introduction, Rick Rose in the house. So much to discuss with him. It's first take. Stay here. The best recognize the best. I'm talking about first take. 
the best debate show on TV. We're talking about sports debate, too. They can go anywhere. First take, my man Stephen A., Molly, my girl, and, of course, Max. What can we say?